Hi, welcome. Congratulations on finding us. <laughs> Thank you for making the trek all the way over here. And we'll see if more people trickle in as we go. So this is the SIG release intro session for the day, of our first session. And I am Tim Pepper. I'm a software engineer in the open source program office at VMware. And this is Claire. Hi, I'm a program manager at Pivotal. So I am one of the chairs of SIG release, and I was also the release lead for the 112 Kubernetes release. So we will uh -oh. yeah, we'll, we'll just do that. That's fine. Maybe. Let's focus. There we are. No. No. There we go. OK. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about SIG release in general, and then go into a little more detail on what a release is, what the release process is, and talk about the life cycle of an individual release, and then the team that makes up the release team, how we get together as a community and collaboratively put out a Kubernetes release, and go into some details on the roles and responsibilities on those, and then kind of end with a call to action to, to let you know that this is an open source community. These are all things that are staffed effectively by volunteers or corporate contributors as well, but it's a, it's a choice. We need people to actively step up and choose to give some of their time to these things. So first of all, SIG release. Our charter says that it's our job to kind of foster and ensure that there are reliable quality releases on a schedule. So you all can look at the words there, but the, the, the highlights are that reliable schedule. So we put out a a fixed number of releases each year. And then we try to ensure that there's a consistent group of people doing this. So it's volunteers, but you, you need to have that be a sustainable process. You can't have 20 people volunteer this quarter, and then the 115 release finishes, and they all go away, and you have 20 new people who have to figure out how to turn this crank. So we try to make sure that it's a sustainable process. And we'll go into that in more detail. We also are in charge of or responsible for the tooling around the release process. And this is a big area where we need to do some work in improving things. We're trying to make it more automated. So the D is not bolded there. Our goal is to automate the releases. Too much of it is manual at this point, but it's aspirational that we get to a point where it is automated. And then a large part of our work in the actual release itself is working with the other SIGs. So this is kind of what a release looks like. We have four releases a year, so you end up with sort of a 12 or 13 week process depending on the specifics of things, or as little as a, a 10 week cycle depending on like US Thanksgiving and Christmas. It can kind of get collapsed in because of that. This is open source, so the idea of what is going to be in a release is kind of agile or deferred commitment. There's ideas that people in the community are having constantly all the time. There's discussion ongoing. But during the first month of the cycle, we really try to get the community and all of the SIG leaders to nail down formally what they intend to deliver at the end of the cycle. And that's important because at some point, we need to know that we're shipping with quality. That's one of our... our is a part of our SIG charter. So we need to know what we're aspiring to do and have some risk management there that's active risk management to understand what the complexities are and know that we're tracking towards actually being able to deliver those. So in the fourth week, we have what's called the enhancements freeze, where at that point, we, we have a listing of all the major intended work for that release that's coming. And these take the forms of what are called Kubernetes enhancement proposals. It's a, a formalized document. So each of those enhancements that are targeting the release should have a KEP. It should be in the implementable state. And that includes not just having a design and architecture for code that's implementable, but having, for example, a documented upgrade strategy, how this feature is going to be versioned across Kubernetes releases in the future, a documented test plan for the feature, Test cases will be delivered in time for this and documentation as well. 
So then there's work that's going on all the time. Code is streaming into the, the head of the master branch. And around week seven or so, we create a branch that's going to be the, the stable support point for this release. And that's an actual Git branch. So Git is behind all of this. And our branch manager and our tools people go ahead and create that branch and then start moving content from master branch over to the release branch as we move through a few weeks of final bug fixing up to the release point. And then that repeats across the year. So in the spring, we're doing the, the 115 release, but before that we had 114. So each of these sort of cycles through, you have that enhancements definition and work, the, the code freeze period for stabilization and the release point, but we did that for 114. We're doing it for 115 now to finish at the end of June. We'll follow that with 116 and then 117 as well. And it's important to note that once we make a release, the release isn't done. Each of these branches has stable support for a period of nine months or three subsequent releases. So 114 is under stable support right now, as is 113 and 112 before that. But as soon as 115 releases, 112 will move out of support. So SIG release and the release team are also responsible for doing that branch management. And we have, we're expanding now to have a patch release team that, because a large portion of our fixes at this point, we're, as much as it's a dy dynamic, active moving project, a large portion of our fixes that are critical fixes, they land in master, but they're also applicable on all of those previous releases that are under support. So rather than having a branch manager that cherry picks patches back for their branch that they're the one responsible for, we're trying to make it a team so that we can do that analysis once. If you're going to pick it to three branches, but it's the same patch, we don't need three different people doing that in parallel. So. That's what we've been doing. And to, to go into just a little bit more detail, every project has different methods of branching and forking their code. So we basically have our master branch for Kubernetes that's just running along all the time. But towards the end of the release, we make a release branch. And periodically, we basically just are fast forwarding that branch over to the master content. But we, we do that sort of in, in a stepped phasing so that we get all of the CI on master. We can understand what we think are the problems there, what we think patches have come in on master for fixes. And we, can, we have the ability to deliberately pick and say, OK, I'm going to fast forward this, this point, and we should see the corresponding CI failures improve on the release branch, and we can track the progress that we're making as we stabilize things. At the very end of the process, we may be much more deliberate, and at, at some point, we stop doing that basic fast forwarding, and we start cherry picking individual patches just at the last couple days at most of the release, typically. Um, and, and during that final phase, the master branch is frozen, we call it. The, the leads of the broader organization aren't merging in code arbitrarily, even if it meets merge requirements, because we want to ensure that for the features we care about, we have solid, positive passing tests there. Once we've released, we, we put a tag on the release branch for the 1.12.0. And subsequently from there, as we have critical fixes in master, and master's continued on. So in this example, Claire is working on the 115 release. Once it goes, master branch will effectively be 116 alpha. But critical bug fixes that land there will individually cherry pick those down. So across the course of a release, there might be 2,000 commits that come in on master, and those all flow into the release. But then the cherry picked patches dial down, and we start having two or three dozen patches, perhaps, per release on, on that order. And it, it slowly goes down as during the nine months of support. So in words, we backport critical fixes to the release branch. And that's a selective process, cherry picking in Git. We support three releases at a time. So right now, the current stable is 112. Sorry, 113. We didn't update that. Yeah, those are all off one. So as you can tell, we're constantly moving forward. It's, it's a little tricky to keep up with all of these things because it's, it's always moving. So 
114, 113, and 112 are the current supported ones. Those all need shifted forward a couple. What that amounts to is about nine months of support on a given patch release, a uh, given minor release. So if you're doing semantic versioning, x.y.z, Kubernetes 1.13.6, those are the x, y, and z. For a 1.13, that's considered a minor release in semantic versioning here. We give nine months of patch release support for that. So I was the release team lead for 1.12. And that was kind of the culmination of being involved in the release team as a shadow earlier on and a lead of a sub portion, very similar to what Nikita described during the keynote at the very end of the sessions this morning. And we have this process of having shadows who are involved in sort of a subsidiary role, learning about the release team. And, and my release team lead shadow just walked in the door, Aish Sundar. So she took over from me for the release after 113, and then it carried on. And Claire's similarly gone through that to be the, the lead for 115. And we'll hand over to her to talk about the release team. Thanks, Tim. So as Tim mentioned, we have a bunch of volunteers. As you can see, tons of different folks who get involved in the release. Oftentimes, a lot of the shadows will progress on and become lead. So you can see um, for 112, those are all the folks who ended up in a shadow role who moved on to lead. And it continues. You go into 113, and then 114, and then 115 is the release we're currently on. And that's the release I'm the lead for. Um, just some context for folks who might be like, oh, how does one get involved in this? What does it sort of look like from an individual perspective? Um, someone within my company was part of the release team, and they mentioned uh, wanting to get more folks involved. And I said, oh, this sounds interesting. I do a lot of release management in my day job. I wonder what it looks like for the open source. So starting around August or September, I think of 2018, I started joining the release team calls. Since they're all public, anyone can join. We encourage folks who are interested in the release to join the calls to learn more. I saw it, and I said, oh, this looks kind of cool. When 113 was about to kick off, they had an open call for shadows for roles. I looked through the handbook guides. Um, for each of these roles, we have public handbooks in GitHub that you can learn more about what the role does, what are the responsibilities? Um, looking through, I said, oh, enhancements looks kind of cool. So I volunteered to be an enhancements shadow in 113. Um, each of these releases is about a quarter. So as Tim mentioned, 10 to 12 weeks, not a huge time commitment to try something out and see if you like it. So I did. Turned out I actually really enjoyed working as an enhancements shadow. And so when my lead, Kendrick, asked if I wanted to take on the role of lead, I said, sure, why not? Let's try it. So I was the enhancements lead for 114. And doing that was, again, super fun, very rewarding to learn more about what the enhancements process is like for an open source release. And then when the outgoing lead, Aaron, asked if I wanted to be release lead for 115, honestly, I was a little kind of like, oh, man, what am I about to get myself into? But I was super excited to, again, contribute to this open source community and try leading a release. And so far, we're at about week seven of the 115 release, and it's been very rewarding. So um, basically, it's super easy for folks to volunteer and get involved and try, test out the water, see what their interest is in. I know we've had a lot of leads who have tried one lead role, and then they go on to shadow a different role because they want to learn more about what that's like. And I know we have quite, we have a couple of release team members in the room. So if you've ever participated in a release team and you want to just sort of raise your hand or stand up to let folks know. Lots of folks. So yeah. Um, so yeah, as we mentioned, it is all volunteer for the most part. Um, granted, some companies do have a vested interest in the open source, so they'll um, encourage employees to join. But for the most part, this is all volunteer time for many people. A lot of folks in EMEA donate their evenings. A lot of folks in the West Coast sometimes donate their mornings to help. Um, we meet regularly to talk about the release. So 
on a release team, you can expect to have at least one one-hour meeting at the start of the cycle. Um, as we get closer to the end, those meetings increase as we need to keep a better pulse on the release. So you meet regularly. It's also really cool because you get to meet a lot of different SIGs um, throughout the release process. We'll have to work with many different SIGs to check up on enhancements, to talk about um, scalability or testing, all these different aspects. So I think the release team is a really cool place to sort of get your feet wet within Kubernetes because you learn a lot about the project with, again, not having to give a massive time commitment up front. Again, each release is about a quarter, so you can try it out one quarter and see if it's something you want to continue with. Um, and lastly, we do have a lot of fun on the release team. At least I like to think it's a lot of fun. Um, so again, we have a bunch of different roles depending on what you're interested in. So lead, enhancement, CI signal, test infra, bug triage, branch management, docs, release notes, comms, and patch release management. I think most of these are relatively straightforward as what they do. Again, all of the roles are on the GitHub for Kubernetes, so you can learn more about them and see what interests you the most where you might want to get started. Uh, talking about selection, so you might be asking, oh, this is so cool, so how does one actually get onto a release team? So for a lot of the leads, as we showed, um, typically the leads will pick a shadow that they think would be interested, who has the time commitment ability to get involved, and the leads will nominate those shadows to join the release team, and they do it, again, all in GitHub. It's all public for the community. and those leads, if they choose to accept, then get to move on and pick their shadows. The shadow selection process has changed a bit over the past few release cycles. Starting in 1.14, because we had tons of interest, we opened up a survey for folks to express interest in shadowing on the release team, and I think the first survey had like 128 responses. Tons of interest. Um, and so from there, the leads will look over all the folks who filled out the survey and decide, oh, who of this looks like it would be a good fit given the time commitment, given the interest, given what they want to get out of the release team. And then they'll pick a selection of folks to be their shadows. Um, some roles have less shadows than others just based on what the role calls for and how much the lead feels they can mentor at that point in the release. Yeah, and so again, showing all the nominations process, lots of GitHub Reacts. Everyone gets really excited about at least Team HR. Um, yeah, so as just mentioned, all of this happens, and all of this process is also available to look over on the GitHub page. Cool. Yeah. So. We want people to understand that this is approachable and you can get involved and it's a great way to learn about the project. There's lots of information out there, but it's not the only thing that we do. So I'd mentioned the Kubernetes enhancement proposal process. The, and, and Claire had started out on the enhancements process, so tracking, sort of project managing all of these potential enhancements or features, major changes to the project. So this is something that's newer in the project. Prior to the spring, it wasn't mandatory. It was a kind of an optional thing if you felt like formalizing your enhancement to the, this degree. But we've shifted now to, I feel like we're kind of growing up as a project. A lot of what SIG release is aiming to do is, is growing up and improving quality processes, quality software engineering. And the KEPs are a part of that. So if, if you're familiar with Python PEPs, or OpenStack blueprints, it's a similar sort of idea. You write a design document and you gather consensus around it. That open source community consensus forming can be a slow process though. So we're experiencing a little bit of friction maybe right now where people are like, ah, Keps, I have to, I have to write all of this stuff. I have to get all of it approved and on a timeline and it's, it's pressure and open source, why isn't it just fun and easy? But SIG release, part of our duty, I feel like, is to make sure that people aspire to that higher level of quality software engineering. And KEPs are a key part of that. 
They're also not the only thing that we do. We have a number of sub-projects that we're looking to start up. So the release team is formally a sub-project of SIG release. And it's happening on a quarterly basis. And you see this turnover in people. And it can be a lot of work. Uh, Claire mentioned like at the beginning, there's an hour meeting a week. But people are preparing in advance of that meeting. And at the end, in the final weeks, there's a daily meeting for an hour. And you might spend quite a few hours on the release team ahead of that meeting and after the meeting getting ready for collecting status, discussing status, and then following up on things that need to be changed. I don't feel like the release team is exactly getting burned out at any given phase, but it's a lot of work, and it's a major time commitment. And for the people on the team who are strictly volunteers or professionally volunteering a portion of their time, it's a, it's a very large commitment to do on an ongoing basis. So we do have turnover. But that leaves us with sort of a gap in the community. There's bigger picture things that need longer term ongoing engagement. And for that reason, we've started these other sub projects. So the first is release engineering. And I mentioned that we're responsible as a SIG for the tooling around the release process. That tooling is getting a little long in the tooth. It's getting a little old and crufty. And the more those of us who operate it spend time operating it, the more we're starting to long for something better. So this subproject is really just kicking off. Tomorrow, in the SIG release deep dive session, we'll be talking in more detail about this. But we're looking to formulate a plan to really modernize the release tooling, get much more automation there. The next one is licensing. This, again, will come back to tooling implementation. but. As an open source project, it, you could look at Kubernetes and say, oh, it's Apache licensed. Done. But it's Golang, and we vendor a bunch of Go code into our repository. And all of those projects have licenses. And we have an obligation in open source to ensure that we are actually doing the right thing, that we're complying with those licenses, or that we're not combining code in ways that ends up violating a license. And since all of that's Go code and it gets vendored in, it's got a life cycle that ne needs managed. And you don't want humans being the, the gatekeeper on individual commits that come in and have potentially brought in some other code from somewhere and potentially something for a license and a license conflict. You can't rely on, on humans to constantly monitor that. So we have a subproject that's working on some things, like, for example, Black Duck, if you're familiar with that, getting tools like that automated into our flow to be scanning and watching to ensure that we are fully compliant with all of the licenses of other projects upon which we depend or interact with. And then finally, I talked earlier about the life cycle, how we do nine months of support. That isn't exactly popular with everybody, especially enterprise users. They say nine months, or even, even if I upgrade every nine months, well, then only three months later, that thing that I upgraded to potentially has gone out of support if I just went sequentially. So we're hearing pretty loudly from our user base that what we do for community support of the project is not sufficient. But what we're not hearing clearly is what the answer is. So we started up a working group, and we're calling it long-term support, even though that LTS acronym, when people see LTS, they think something more like Ubuntu LTS, and they, they envision multiple years of support. We're an agile project, and as much as we hear people saying they want longer support for the things we release, we're also hearing that the release process is too heavy and takes too long. A lot of people would like to see a shorter release cycle. So figuring out a path between this is the, the responsibility of this working group. We're trying to be open-minded and not prescriptive. We're, even though it's called LTS, we're not saying that we will necessarily do LTS as you know it today. We're trying to figure out what the actual user's needs are and meet them while also keeping the developer community happy and making sure that we reduce friction there as well, possibly increasing the cadence of releases. And on Thursday, there will be a deep dive session, uh, sort of a boff of the, the LTS working group if you're interested in learning more about that. Especially within the release team, it's, it's sort of, I'm passionate about trying to convey that Kubernetes is not just about some features in Go and um, writing code and, and being a container orchestrator, that there's a lot bigger picture to Kubernetes than that. And kind of echoing the keynotes earlier in the day, that Kubernetes is 
about the people. And all of these are areas where we need people involved and working and doing things beyond just code. These are highly valuable things to be working on and enhancing. So all of that release engineering, I talked about the automation there, but other things like marketing. When Kubernetes 1.15 goes out, there will be a whole series of blog posts prepared and PR and things like that that Claire and her release team have worked with professionals in marketing to, to put out there so that everybody who's curious about the new release gets professionally prepared, readable, consumable content that describes the KEPs that were implemented. And Claire will be doing interviews. And I know for me, that was a very weird thing to, I'm, I'm an engineer, I write code, but as a release team lead, people wanted to interview me for like the news. It's very strange. So, but there are people who are professionals at that, and we rely on them to help teach us how to do that well. So we need more people like that involved. Documentation, obviously. When 115 releases, one of the members of the release team will flip a switch, and documentation specific to the 115 release will go live on the website. Again, that's preceded by at least three months of people who are specialized in documentation, making sure that we have quality docs on all of our key enhancements. Similar for testing, all of those things need to come with the appropriate amount of initial quality. Alpha features maybe are a little less stable, but we, we try as much as we can there. But certainly things that we're going to declare as stable GA, we want really solid test plans. And that backs up at least three months, if not for a stable GA feature, nine to 12 months beforehand, all sorts of work going into test cases and test infrastructure improvements. If you are passionate about testing and test engineering, we need people like you on the project. Project management, obviously, all of this is a lot of cat herding to make sure all of this stuff comes together on a time schedule. And then communication, sharing that information out at the end of the cycle. So if these are things that you're interested in, we would love to have you involved in Kubernetes broadly, but especially in release teams. And that is basically our talk. We um, tried to leave some time for Q&A that I think we've got a good chunk of time still. So if you have questions about any of this, raise your hand and I'll run the mic out so everybody in the room can hear you and it, it gets on the recording as well. because that's when I was going out to SIGs, understanding like what their plans were for different enhancements they were hoping to land in a release cycle. And then after code freeze, I basically had very little to do because once code free passes, enhancement is done. On the flip side, um, a group like CI Signal has a lot of work that builds consistently over the release because they care a lot about the test grids and like what tests are passing. So their work gets a lot more intense near the end when the tests matter a lot in terms of are we gonna ship the release on time. Um, I was the CI signal shadow when I first joined the project and I spent almost no time the first two months because hardly anybody tests alpha releases, go figure. But in the final month, it started ramp ramping up, and I was helping the shadow going through all the incoming issues. As the lead for CI Signal in the final weeks, I spent a couple hours every morning prepping for the meeting to collect status, and then a couple hours after the meeting probably pushing. So for a week or so, that role became almost a full-time job. As release lead, I feel like you're running a meeting once a week for an hour, but you're pinging all sorts of people all across the cycle. So that role is much more nearing a full-time job for much of the cycle. So it's important, we, we want volunteers who are on the team who are seriously committed, but also you wanna be successful, you wanna learn and contribute. So it's important for people to be able to understand that time commitment. And we've been working all of those, oh, and we'll post the slides after, but the slides have links in them in the, Earl, the Earls that you saw up there. If you click on those, on GitHub we have 
uh, multi-page documents for each of these roles describing that, and part of that is a bit on the time commitments and the phasing of time commitment across it. Yeah, so um, if I'm understanding the question, uh, what is our approach in terms of pushing documentation if we're continuously building off of master? My understanding for the main release, so for miners like 115, 114, we don't, we'll slowly build up all the docs PRs throughout the cycle and then we will, uh, the docs team will check them, like be working on writing docs throughout and then they will push them live for patches. I believe that is done as each patch is ready to be released. Yeah, unlike the code, I believe that they don't use fork branches like what I described for the code because they have to have all of the docs live, but they use a content management system and they can stage and prepare things so that if you go to the Kubernetes docs website in the top right corner, there's a little drop down and you can toggle release 114, 113, 112. And I don't know the specifics of the CMS that they use or their process, but they're a really good example of basically everything on the release team, even though there's a docs lead and they're not here to describe the details of the process, almost everything is delegated. So there's a special SIG that's dedicated to docs. They manage translation, their version control, all of that. And I sort of joke sometimes that on the release team, we don't do anything. You ask like how much time it takes and we describe a lot of time doing stuff, but we're not doing the work so much as tracking and making sure that we understand what's committed and commitments are delivered. So SIG Docs is responsible in owning all of the docs and there's a whole bunch of professional doc writers there and translators. Yeah, I have a question regarding licensing. So I know uh, all the software is using like weird licenses with uh, typos in license names typos, I don't know, in the files, and uh, how do you guys uh, collaborate uh, all that together? Is it uh, to a ready tool or a database with, I don't know, well-known licenses? Yes, to all of that. <laughs> That's why we have a sub-project to work on cleaning it up. There's manual stuff, there's some crude tools, there's some, been some looking at using commercial tools. Some, we have access to some commercial tools through licenses that the CNCF has paid for. So it's a, it's a mishmash and it, it's something that, it's important to do the right things right in open source and license compliance is one of those that you really need to do. So tightening that up and making sure that we don't have any gaps or questions there is a, a key thing for us. If nobody else has questions, if we have a couple of minutes, I'll put our past release team members on the spot. Anything that you think we've missed that you'd like to comment on? Hannes, Maria, Kenny, Aish? In the release swag. <laughs> oh, yeah. the release swag. So. For the release. And that, that ends up on GitHub. A, a picture of it or whatever, and it's usually something kind of goofy, and we make t-shirts, or the the 1.11 release lead, he was a potter, and he made each of us a really nice mug, handmade, is a, our gift for being on the release team. This is the, uh, the design for the theme that the 114 lead Aaron made, and all of the release team members will get a t-shirt with this design on it. I understand these t-shirts are getting passed out this week, so if you see those shirts around this week, that, that's those of us who are on that release team. That is. You can see them and say, hey, tell me more about your experience on the release team for 114. Cool shirt. Anything else? Well, if you want to learn more about any of those sub-projects, tomorrow we've got our SIG release deep dive, and on the long-term support question, that open-ended discussion will be on Thursday as well. So thank you for coming, and we hope to see some new contributors in the future. <laughs>